Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Dr. Amir Mohammed, a GI medical oncologist and neuroendocrine tumor specialist at UH Seidman Cancer Center. Today I would like to talk to you guys about targeted therapy and types of systemic therapies that we offer our neuroendocrine tumor patients. So as we know, every person is unique and different, and so is each neuroendocrine tumor. So they require different treatment options according to what type of neuroendocrine tumors the patient has. Your treatments depend on many factors. The most important factor is the location of the primary tumor. So someone with neuroendocrine neoplasm in the small bowel will be treated differently than someone with neuroendocrine tumor in the pancreas. One of the other most important factors is how many tumors a person may have and how large are these tumors are. There are many treatment options we can offer our patients, starting from somatostatin analogs, peptide radionuclide therapy, targeted therapy, and even chemotherapy in some patients. Let's start with the somatostatin analog. Somatostatin is a basically a hormone that your body is secreting from different areas, so it will decrease the secretion of other hormones, such as serotonin, glucagon, insulin, and many other hormones as well. But it also will slow down the empty of the bowel. So this hormone working only for about one and a half to two minutes. So logically, we cannot give it our patient because we cannot give the patient treatment every one to two minutes. And we need something more long acting. So if you look about somatostatin analog, it's basically the synthetic form long acting of the somatostatin that it will work and cover almost 28 days. This is the main foundation and the backbone for treating metastatic neuroendocrine tumors, especially we're talking about the well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. These are given every month by injection, either in the muscle or subcutaneous fat, and these somatostatin analogs will attach to a specific receptor, which is the somatostatin receptors, and acting like a key fitting into a lock. This type of treatment usually help our patient with metastatic or stage 4 well-differentiated gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, who the cancers has somatostatin receptors. The benefit of these treatments are twofold. First is to block the hormone secretion, which will help to improve symptoms, but also it will slow down the progression of the cancer, and this has been shown in many phase 3 randomized trials. One of the other treatments that has been recently approved by the FDA is the PRRT or peptide receptor radionuclide therapy. This is relatively a newer treatment has been approved by the FDA after a randomized phase 3 trial, the NETR1 trial, which have shown almost 79% reduction in disease progression and death in patients who received the PRRT comparing to the patient who only received the high-dose somatostatin analog. This type of therapy is basically a radioactive material attached to a specific domain looks like the somatostatin analog, which can be given intravenous every two months for usually a total of four treatments. So the total period of treatment is about eight months. We can sometimes repeat that in selected patients who finish the eight months and then start progressing maybe a year after that, but this usually requires a multidisciplinary discussion with the whole team before we repeat the treatment. People usually who benefit from this type of peptide receptor radionuclide therapy are those who have metastatic neuroendocrine tumors and has been progressed already on the somatostatin analog in the first line setting. And usually this is for patients with gastroenteropancreatic, what is a primary tumor in the pancreas or the small bowel, and they are well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. We usually want to make sure that they have a strong somatostatin expression in all the metastatic tumors, and this will be through the multidisciplinary discussion and reviewing of the functional scan, whether the PET scan gallium 68 or cover 64. One of the other treatments we use for our patients is targeted therapy. These are treatment that target specific gene mutation, or they can also target the blood supply to the tumor. Currently, we have two targeted therapies that we consider as a standard of care. Everolimus is one of them, and sunatinib is the other one. Everolimus targets the mTOR specific protein, which is correlate with the cell proliferation and helps the tumor cell to grow. And sunatinib is a target specific protein called the VGF, and this is helped to stop the growing of the cancer as well because it will basically target the blood vessel that supplies the blood to the tumor. One of the other last treatments that I would like to discuss with you today is the chemotherapy. As you see, most of our treatment for the well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors is non-chemotherapy-based treatments. 
but if the patient have a fast growing neuroendocrine tumors, or we would like to shrink the tumor to improve the symptoms if they're having a lot of response, or even taking them to surgery, even if they're having metastatic neuroendocrine tumors, a specific oral chemotherapy can be the right option for you. And it works better in certain types of neuroendocrine tumors, for example, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, sometimes have better responses than other mid-gut or maybe lung neuroendocrine tumor when we use a specific oral chemotherapy. So it's very important that you need to talk to your oncologist and to the neuroendocrine tumor team about if this is a good option for you or not, and if not, what other types of options will be available for you. There are a lot of new treatments and clinical trials for patients with neuroendocrine tumors, and will be more in the future as well. This is why it is very important to have a multidisciplinary team in a neuroendocrine tumor specialized cancer center to make sure that we improve outcome and we also deliver the most cut-edge updated treatment for our patients.